Okay, now we're ready to take a look at example B. And this is also on page 81. Okay, and this question is also asking us to look at this sequence and decide whether or not it converges and if it converges to figure out what it's converging to. So we're going to approach this problem the same way that we did the previous one, just by taking the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, and notice that this fraction has the same form as n goes to infinity. The top and the bottom get really, really big and approach infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, just as we've done several times before to help us calculate this limit. So we're going to take the derivative of the numerator. e to the 2n has a derivative that looks like 2e to the 2n using the chain rule. And on the bottom, our derivative is just going to be 5e to the n. The plus 1 goes away. Okay, and at this point, we can do a little bit of algebraic cancellation here. So e to the 2n over e to the n, if we cancel those with each other, we're going to get one extra e to the n in the top. Okay, because one of those e to the 2n's cancels with the e to the n that was in the bottom previously. And that turns our limit into just the limit of 2e to the n over 5. Notice that now, if you look at what's happening, um, the numerator is getting really, really large as n goes to infinity, while the denominator is staying constant. Okay, and you think about what happens with a fraction. If the numerator gets really, really big and the denominator stays constant, the whole fraction is just going to go off to infinity, Okay, which means that this sequence diverges. Mm. So we're done with this problem, but I'd like to show you a second way that we could have approached it Okay, that might actually be more useful in some, pre in some future problems that we do. Mm. Okay, so this is going to be an alternate solution that we write here. And this alternate solution is what I like to call the dominant powers method. Okay, it's a way of circumventing L'Hopital's rule. All right, so we're going to start at the beginning of the problem again. And instead of using L'Hopital's rule, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the denominator and try to pick out the thing in the denominator that grows the fastest. Okay, so we've got a 5e e to the n and we've got a plus 1. And the thing that gets biggest the fastest, if you think about it here, is the e to the n. Okay, so what we're going to do, and this will seem like a kind of an unusual thing to do at first, we are going to multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 1 over that e to the n. Hmm. We can do that as long as we do the same thing on the top and the bottom of the fraction. Hmm. Okay, if you think about what happens there, it really has the effect of dividing every single term in the fraction by e to the n. Hmm. So for example, if we take the numerator e to the 2n and multiply it by 1 over e to the n, we are going to get e to the 2n over e to the n. That's our new numerator. And then in the denominator, that 1 over e to the n is going to actually have to distribute through to both of the terms in the bottom. So 5e e to the n is going to get divided by e to the n, and so is 1, the second term. All right, so we've got a bunch of fractions now. So this might look more complicated than what we started with, but some nice things are going to happen if we simplify here. Hmm. Okay, for example, the numerator here, e to the 2n over e to the n, is just e to the n if you do the cancellation. Okay, and then the 5e e to the n over e to the n in the bottom, notice that the e to the n's cancel, and we just get a 5 down there. And 1 over e to the n can't really simplify that, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Hmm. And then we can look at the fraction that we have and ask, what happens as n goes to infinity? Okay, well, notice something kind of special happens to this 1 over e to the n that I just circled. As n goes to infinity, the denominator of that little fraction is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So 1 over e to the n should go to 0, which means that that whole fraction goes away. 
as n goes to infinity. Hmm. All right, so if we put that all together, now that that piece has gone to zero, what's left is just e to the n over five plus zero, which is just five. And we're kind of back in the same situation that we were above of having an e to the n in the top that goes to infinity and a denominator that just stays constant. And so that whole fraction is going to have to go it off to infinity. That's the same answer as what we got you doing this problem the previous way. Hmm. Okay, so you could have choosed either, chosen either way of doing this problem. Um, probably the, the first way that we did above with L'Hopital's rule was easier, but this alternate way of looking at it will be easier in some problems that we'll see later on.